I took the day off today and my daughter and I went over to the coast. She lives in Colorado, so she doesn't get a chance to see the coast too often. And when she visits, you know, I'd like to spend some time with her. This is uh, my daughter, Shelby, who has been quite ill. She has Lyme disease. And I asked her if I could question her. You know, I know the answers that she's given me because I've been dealing with it too, but um, I want you to hear it firsthand. In tree work, we are encountering environments where ticks are quite prevalent. And Lyme disease has become such a huge problem. And if you catch it early enough, you can resolve the problem. But if you don't catch it and you just let it go, or if it gets misdiagnosed as what happened to my daughter, it can be a, a life altering illness that could be fatal or at least um, affect you for the rest of the life. So let me introduce you to my daughter, Shelby. Um, I think you'll enjoy some of the uh, scenery here. The North Coast of California. The Wilder State Park, just north of Santa Cruz along Highway 1. And it's this tree here, it's a cedar tree, a red cedar. That is the most amazing specimen of a cedar tree I think I've ever seen. It looks like every kid in the world has been climbing on this for a hundred years. But look at this, everywhere you look there's roots coming up. What a beautiful, beautiful tree. <laughs> this is my daughter, Shelby. Shelby is 26 years old, and unfortunately, she has Lyme disease. Don't you? Unfortunately, yes. How long have you had Lyme disease? For 10 years. 10 years. How are you doing with your Lyme disease now? I'm doing pretty well. I'm on a treatment that's working really well, and I'm working and I'm going to the gym and I'm driving again, so I'm doing pretty well. What was it like two years ago? Uh, pretty bad. I was having seizures and had a lot of memory problems. Didn't have a lot of energy, but I am on a new treatment that's helping a lot. Good. Yeah. Come on. All that's right. better. You got your Lyme glasses on. I do. So you say you have seizures. I do. When was the last time you had a seizure? Um, a few months ago, probably. Yeah. But. And that's all caused by the Lyme disease. Yeah. So the later it goes undiagnosed, the higher your chances are of having complications. Uh, it turns multi-systemic, which means that if you don't get it treated right away, you have complications throughout your body. So. If you get bit by a tick and you have the classic bullseye rash, chances of you catching it right away are going to be a lot higher because you see the classic bullseye rash. But that only occurs uh, about 50% of the time. So you can get a tick bite and not have that rash? No. And a lot of the time, rashes don't present as a bullseye rash. They'll present as redness or some streaking. It doesn't always look like a classic bullseye rash. So you've had Lyme disease for 10 years now. Yes. Did you get a tick bite that you know about? I grew up getting bit by ticks because we grew up in the mountains, but there was no tick bite that I clearly remember getting right before I was sick. Okay. So I, it's very hard to narrow it down to when exactly the symptoms started. So the, the tell me a little bit about the treatment that you've been on because you, you had to I've do... tried like everything <laughs> well, um, well the antibiotics is something that you were on for a long time right now I'm doing antibiotics and herbal medicine so like a combination of Eastern and Western because 
I think that you need to integrate both. So I'm doing both at the moment. Is this a recommendation recommendation from a Lyme doctor? Yes. Yeah, so I see a doctor that specializes in Lyme. Uh, Lyme disease is very controversial because um, insurance companies will not cover treatment for more than two weeks. And insurance companies and the CDC say that if you treat for you know, two weeks with antibiotics, you're cured even if you still present with symptoms. Um, so there's this other dividing group called ILADS and they've come up with a group of treatments that are showing to clinically work really well. And it's showing that you need long-term treatment because the bacteria, which is called a spirochete, changes and evolves each time you do a new treatment. Hello. All right, stop for a second. Okay. All right. You've got Lyme disease, but there are other diseases that ticks carry. Right? Yes, they're called co-infections. So okay, how many of these co-infections do you have? Uh, when I first got diagnosed, I had Lyme, Babesia, Bartonella, and Ehrlichia. That's four different? Yes. How many diseases are there that are associated with ticks? Uh, off the top of my head, there's seven, I think. Seven I would have diseases. to double check, but. So when you're treating the disease, you know, when, when people think about Lyme disease, they just think of the Lyme disease, yeah. but you've got to treat each of these different. They, people just think of Lyme, but the fact is that if you think of a tick, they're biting a deer. They're drinking their blood, they're getting whatever bacteria the deer has, and then they're biting you, and they're transmitting that bacteria too. So it's not always going to just be Lyme, it's going to be mm. Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever, Babesia, or Lichia, Bartonella. There's so many different things you can get, and it also depends on what type of tick it is. Okay, sorry, I'm really hitting you with the questions now. <laughs> I'm your dad, so I know the answers to a lot of these, but it's good that you're telling the story. So you've had Lyme disease and the co-infections for 10 years. Mm -hmm. How does it affect you after all the treatments that you've been through? What, what, is, what is your life like now? Uh, I mean, I don't really remember what it's like to not be sick because I've been sick since I was a teenager. Um, drastically different. I mean, I have to kind of pay attention to my energy throughout the day, not overdo it. My life revolves around treatments and doctor's appointments and managing my health. And um, it, it really does take over your life. Like you have to commit. It, it, being sick is a full-time job, basically. And, and how has it affected your ability to work? Um, I can only work from home now because I have to focus on my health and treatments, which do make me feel sick when I treat the Lyme it causes flare-ups and something called a Herxheimer reaction and you know oftentimes I'm too sick to get out of bed when I'm treating and so luckily I'm able to work from home but uh, let me tell you a little bit about that I'm gonna give you a little plug here if any of you guys out there want a custom design tattoo this is the girl she is an amazing artist she works as a tattoo designer Thankfully, she's not covered with tattoos <laughs> that I know of. I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> but she does, she gets a lot of, so if there's any of you that want a really cool tree tattoo or something, give me a, give me a ring and I'll put you in touch with my daughter and you can do a, a, a tattoo for him. All right. Pretty reasonable too. Yeah. <laughs> do mountain lions carry ticks? Yeah. All mammals carry ticks. and certain things use up spoons and you only have 10 spoons for the entire day. So like working is five spoons and cooking dinner is two spoons and exercising is three and you know, you only have 10 and you have to use your time wisely and not overdo it. Otherwise you're negative spoons. How are you, do how are you doing right now? I'm doing fine. Yeah? Yeah. You told me a few minutes ago you're getting pretty tired. I'm hanging in there. I mean, I'm tired, but it feels nice to be out. She lives in Colorado, so she doesn't get to see the coast very often. Uh-huh. I took the day off to take her out on a father-daughter day. Yeah. All right, we're going to take a break for a few. Think there's ticks around here? 
Yes, everywhere. There was a sign on our way sign. into the hike saying there was Lyme disease here. So are you going to do a tick check when we're all done? Yeah, when we get home I will. Oh. And I'll shower. Okay. So, ticks. Every state in the union, right? Yes. Yes. People think that they're not in every state, but they are on, in every continent except Antarctica. Wow. So, and when you think they uh, they go everywhere because of the birds migrating. They oh. go on the ticks, or they go on the birds, and then they fly where the birds migrate, and then that's how they spread. Huh. Yeah. So this is like one of the biggest unspoken epidemics that we, we have right now. And, you know, there's a lot of people with Lyme disease that, that have um, different symptoms that are misdiagnosed. That happened to you, didn't it? Yes, it's known as the great imitator because it presents as so many different things. It um, adds different symptoms every few weeks. You get pain in different parts of your body. Um, I was misdiagnosed with fibromyalgia, chronic fatigue, some knee issues. You know, they didn't really know. And then they said, oh, you just need to go see a shrink. And, you know, they, it, at the time. And that lasted for over a year. Ah, <laughs> uh, two years. Two years. And yeah. you weren't being treated for the Lyme, so no. it got worse. No. And so the longer you put off getting treated, the longer um, it takes to get into remission and cure your Lyme disease. Okay, this is as far as we're going to make it. Sorry, babe. You got to turn around. Get tired? Yeah, I'm, I'm doing okay. I mean, the same things over and over again. Yeah. You know? I know. But compared to the way you were, uh, say, five years ago, are you 100% better? I don't know. That's the thing. Like, it's it's so hard for me to tell. Like, like, I don't know if I'm, like, doing better. You look a lot better. Yeah. I remember sometimes that you just, you look really, really sad for a long time. And, you know, now at least you're out doing some exercise. And... Yeah. Like, I, I've, like, put weight on. Like, yeah. I, I've gained muscle back and gained, like, weight, which is good. Yeah. Because I can push myself way more. Yeah. But it's just hard because I've been sick for so long. It's hard to gauge, like, I, I don't know. It's hard to gauge if it's, like, actual improvement or not, you know? And it would stop it. Do you keep your seizure meds, your emergency seizure meds with you all the time? Yeah. Where? Well, right now they're in the car. Oh, so if you had a seizure <laughs> out there, you'd be in trouble, Yeah. Huh? Oh, okay. But normally they're, like, in my purse all the time. Yeah. Um, I'm probably on like 10 pharmaceuticals now. 10 pharmaceuticals every single day? Yeah. And how many, um... Was I on? Like, probably 20. 20 a day? Jeez. Before. You just started a new drug that you were telling me about. What's that one called? Crintafel. And what's that for? Uh, it's for the Babesia. It's in clinical trials right now and, um... It's two pills for one month, and it's a malaria treatment, and they... Um, it's been tested for malaria? Yes, so it, it's used for malaria, but Babesia and malaria are um, cellularly the same. Yeah. Their spirochete is like structurally the same. So they treat Babesia with malaria medicine. Wow. And this is a new one. So, you know, malaria is from mosquitoes. Yeah. Do you think that mosquitoes can carry Lyme disease? Yes. Yes, they, they're showing that... Seriously? That they're showing that fleas can carry it. We went this way, right? Uh, yeah. Sorry. Fleas carry Lyme they, disease? They, they're, they're doing studies that are showing that fleas and ticks mosquitoes and spiders can carry it because it's essentially the same thing if like one of those bugs bites a deer which carries Lyme and they bite you they're transmitting that bacteria over to you and mice too yeah mice carry Lyme yeah good lord
Yeah, I know, it's gross. <laughs> I mean, mosquitoes are responsible for so many life-threatening diseases. You know, there's dengue fever, there's you know, yellow fever, there's malaria. Yeah. There's probably a dozen other diseases associated with these damn biting bugs. Yep. Good Lord.